That's the first single off the brand new record from Mr. Leon Ware. Now recording for Stax Records, but you know him as the legendary producer for Motown. He produced Marvin Gaye's I Want You record. He wrote so many great tracks for, for Motown. He's written and produced for Maxwell. Remember that song, Something, Something? Well, it's written by my special guest right now, Mr. Leon Ware. He also wrote Michael Jackson's I Want to Be Where You Are and has worked with Quincy Jones and Body Heat, John Legend, and more. Of course, he has a great new solo record called Moonride, and he'll be performing tonight at the Blue Note in New York City. And I first got to ask him about his style with so much sensuality and the lyrics and romance and Leon, when did you uh, first develop that style and way, way back in, to where you are today with Moonride? Well, the beginning of that style basically is my M.O. Uh, I'm 100% an extremely nasty individual, uh, explained by saying I'm uh, highly sensual, I believe in saying, and, um, I, and this is not a new position, I think I said over 35 years ago, sex should be a religion. It is now my, I would say, if you wanted to call me a Baptist or a Buddhist or a Muslim, I am a sensualist. I believe that that is the, that should have been the first religion anywhere because that's where we come from. And from, I would say, my first album, which was called Leon Weir to... And between the, that, that first album and now, uh, I can point out one album that was probably, uh, that probably signifies uh, my attitude uh, along with the man that I did the work with, which, which was I Want You, that uh, love for the message, that uh, it's, it's like a quest to... Uh, turn people on, put people people in a, in, a, in a space that is not only romantic but inspiring. You know, and the rest, this is like uh, I continue that quest. I look forward to uh, as many years in the future that will be a combination of that. And I'm, I'm hopefully never really the same, but of always alike. Uh, because other than that, it does get a little a sameness is a uh, good as as long as you continue to grow and uh, be creative. Leon Ware is our special guest here on the Upper Room, and you can uh, go to leonware.com, dot com l e o n w a r e dot com and. and the website looks really nice. I know newly uh, designed, and you can check out the biography and all the all the things happen for your music. Also, yeah, really cool. Really, you're a stylish brother. Yeah, well, I'm doing the best I can. Joey's like a, a new world now, and the possibilities are so endless because in a, in a in 24 hours you can touch almost anybody you want to and a lot of anybody you can go all the way around the world used to be when they would say you had a a worldwide release you had uh certain areas of the world that it was released in now when you say a worldwide release it literally means that you know and i only hope to like i'm sure uh, uh the line is long of people that uh long long to look forward to using that facility in a way that it does bind and uh, weave the, the the human fabric together. All right, we're going to get into another track from Moonride, and we'll come back and speak about more about the album Moonride and, of course, the, the big show at the Blue Note in New York City on the 27th on Monday. Uh, but right now, this is the first song in which really grabbed me off Moonride, Blue Dress, you know, a real cool feel to us. Tell us about writing this and, and working in your studio on this one. This is freestyle. Yeah. This is absolutely, actually the first freestyle I've ever done and I will be doing more. When I say freestyle, it wasn't written, it was vibed. I got a track from the young man that um, works with me a lot, his name is Taylor Graves, uh, and I went in the studio listening to it. Lightyear was having such a good time, I put a vocal down, 
came out, everybody had this large smile on their face. Uh, I listened to it. I looked back. Up. I looked behind me. Smiles were still there. I said, well, you know, maybe I should. I mean, I'll keep this, and I'll go back in later and, and, and clean it up. And Tail and a couple other people listened to say, I don't think you want to touch that. So uh, a couple of days later, I listened to it that night. And, uh, and, and, and within a couple of days, I was 100% positive that I was going to keep it that way. So as it's one of your favorites, it's been a couple of other people's favorites. And as they say, what we do as artists usually uh, goes over into how it is received by others. And for me, having as much fun with it, it's, it's only, um, let's say, it, it's reaching its true, true destination when it pleases other people because that's a happy moment. All right, let's get into it right now. Leon Ware, Blue Dress from Moon Ride, and we'll be back on The Upper Room with more Leon Ware. Yes. And we're back here at WVOF 88.5 FM. Joe Kelly here, and uh, our special guest right now, a true legendary producer. He produced the great Marvin Gaye, I Want You, his work with uh, Quincy Jones, Q, and, and Maxwell, and, and John Legend. And, and you're a legend, of course, and... Uh, You've got a big show coming up in New York City, October 27th on Monday, an hour away from our studios. Um, unfortunately, we'll be on the air, so we can't make it out to the show, which which kind of stinks for us. But uh, tell tell us about uh, your band, your rehearsing, and, and what's gonna a little taste of what's gonna happen that night. Well, uh, what's gonna happen that night? I uh, I usually am as gifted as. Um, the gift that I, I, I have within myself in bringing to the stage um, the love that I have for the art form itself. And being that I've been doing this for uh, about three or four different decades, uh, I, it is a part of me that uh, the exercise is, is enriching. Um, I, I can take people back to where uh, a lot of a lot of different moments in their life, and I can also present the possibility of a real erotic future. Yeah, that is on West Third Street in New York City. The Blue Note. You can go to Blue Note's website and also leonware dot com, and uh, he'll be there on Monday, October twenty seventh. Uh, you had a show out in L.A. Your home base out in California. You you live on the water, right? Yes, right next to the water. I live in Marina del Rey. Oh, man, that's the life. Yes, it is. Right, right. It definitely is. I am truly blessed. Oh, uh, you know, going back in time, you grew up in the Midwest, right? I grew up in Detroit. Right. So, so take us into those early days. Uh, uh, your family and, and music-wise, how they influence you, and and your introduction to that that great history of Motown music that you were you were working with. Well, uh, this. There is several different series. I can tell you, I met Barry Gordy before Motown uh, existed in 1957. And he was producing an artist named Jackie Wilson and a couple of other artists like the Gaylords. And there's a female artist who's producing, I don't remember her name right now. But uh, And we got together uh, uh, in uh, a, a club called the 20 Grand. At that I had just came off stage. I, I it was a local weekly contest. I won that particular night, and we start started the um, let's say the idea was he was going to produce uh, uh, he was going to produce me. We never really got around to it. The intent was there. He was so wrapped up with Jackie and the uh, other things, and um, we didn't meet again until 1960. Motown, I think they had already had a couple of hits with the Supremes at that time. And um, nothing really happened then either. Uh, I would say uh, I had been to New York in 1960, spent a couple of years there, and 62 was when my, fa uh, when my father passed away. I came back to Detroit, and uh, for a year I did um, what you call menial different jobs, from being a butcher to driving a cab. I met a, 
a gentleman that was actually the vice president of Motown at the time. You see me driving a cab, in which I, I, like a lot of people, would draw it being, being a very, let's say, an urban, small city. You knew your neighbor, and you knew your neighbor from one side of the town to the other. And um, I had been in a group called the Romeos, and that had stopped, and, and within that time was when I came back, because my father be, had, had been passed away. Uh, and we hadn't seen each other for at least three, four years. And he seen me driving his cab, and he offered me this gig by saying, I can't believe you're doing that with all the talent you got. And we got together, he told me about what was happening in Moortown, and I was his chauffeur for about six months. After the six months, I, I got my first writer's contract with Jobet. Out of that, I really saw a couple, two or three different songs. One um, was the song for Martin Vandellas called Tell Me I'll Never Be Alone. It wasn't a huge hit, but um, one of their, um, uh, it was in, in one, of their, one of their albums. However, my next, uh, uh, my first uh, gold record was with a group called The Isley Brothers. Mm -hmm. and that was called Got to Have You Back in 1964, which was my first gold record. And I've had so um, I don't even know how many at this point, but from that to Michael Jackson, to Marvin Gaye, um, and uh, countless others. Um, and I had my first, uh, could have been my first school record, 1972, on myself, but uh, didn't really work the record. Wasn't At that point, I got so deeply involved in production and uh, writing and production that that was, uh, it was on my back burner. Uh, didn't come back to, in fact, my, where I'm at right now is probably I've been in the mind of being a, a, a notable artist uh, for the past, say, 10 years, 1995. I really started being uh, uh, concentrated on being, I, it might sound strange because uh, this is my, 12th album, and most of the albums I did up until, I'd say, the 90s were because I was either approached or it was, it was a part of a deal that I was working with a particular company because a lot of the records I made was out of somebody asking me because they heard my voice, they liked my voice, and, but I have never worked. I've never been on the road. I, in fact, am getting on the road for the first time in this country. Uh, for people to see my face because they've heard my music. I won't have to say my name twice in a lot of places. But nobody's ever seen me on where. I'm about, Joe, I'm about to change that. I'm looking so forward to reaching out, meeting people that have embraced my music for years, and getting a chance to be a real individual in front of them, you know. So this is like uh, almost, I won't, I won't say a rebirth, this is just like a birth that's, finally being realized you know yeah we're, we're always happy when when you have a record out and uh this this one is outstanding moon ride from leon Ro leon Ware. and i gotta tell you I, th th when i first put the record on in the car this next song just the goosebumps on the arm it, it's just an amazing song to serve you all my love that funk and r&b and, and your great vocals and you have uh your buddy James Ingram uh, singing some background. He's singing background with me. Me and James are born on the same day. I'm much older than he is, but <laughs> <laughs> he's still by. I call him my little brother, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, what a great voice as well. So uh, we're gonna play this right. to serve you all my love from Leon Ware, and we'll come back and talk one final time with our guest, Mr. Leon Ware. <laughs> And that's to serve you all my love from our special guest, Mr. Leon Ware, who is performing at the Blue Note in New York City on West 3rd Street in Greenwich Village. And uh, that's uh, Monday, October 27th. So uh, I know you have your own record company, Kitchen Records, but now you're affiliated with a legendary record label, which is making a big resurgence, Stax Records. Uh, how'd you get affiliated with them? That was uh, a couple of years ago, young man, that just, started with them, has been a fan of mine for years and wanted me to sign, wanted to get with me a few years prior to that, but 
I was already involved with something. He was already, uh, like I say, um, somewhat loaded at the company. He was he was with Virgin at the time. Anyway, but he had heard uh, a song that I did some work with um, a young man named Salon Lerner, who's actually going to be my musical director for the show at the Blue Note coming up. Him and a young man named uh, Kenny Dope had uh, written um, a piece of work sent me a track well that wasn't the track that uh, you're speaking of the track that you're speaking of uh, to serve you I was just getting ready to make a, a little flaw but the track you're speaking of is a track that I actually wrote when I was in Johannesburg in 1995 I think it was 94, 95 and interestingly enough that was one of two tracks that I wrote one track that I wrote was even older than that track. It goes back to, back to the late 80s. And that's a track called I Never Loved So Much. Um, but uh, To Serve You is um, an, another one of my pieces that uh, uh, kind of like uh, explains or, or makes clear where I come from as a musician as a man, because what I do in my musical quest is a service, a service, a service of love to love, you know. And the rest is, is it's never, it's, it's never really a job. It's, it's, uh, uh, if you want to call it, it's, it's, it's an art form to me. And this, uh, the joy is, is that now, not only is it entertaining and <laughs> consoling to people. It's now considered medicinal, so you can call me Dr. Ware. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Ware is in the house ready ready to take patients in. and, and uh, oh, yeah. so Every sensual uh, 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 um, uh, instinct you have in your, in your, uh, uh, your body. Uh, another great collaboration is another artist we are uh, definitely admire, uh, keyboardist Amp Fiddler, who uh, you guys co-wrote from inside and... How, how far do you guys go back and, and tell us about collaborating on that track from inside? Me and Amp only met a few years ago. I've, I had heard of Amp for a few years prior to that, and the engineer that I work with that actually engineered uh, most of Moonride with me, worked with me uh, very close to for uh, two years and putting that project together, his name is Jerry Brown, who was a very close friend of Amp's, and as Amp is from my hometown, uh, it was um, it was a good meeting, needless to say. And we, like a few people in my life, in meeting as being musicians, it was like talking the same language and very easy. So we could go to written three or four had we had the time, and we probably will have more time in the future to do some more work because of how easy that particular piece of work was to create. Um, and Al being uh, an artist himself, we in fact are going to be uh, doing something next month in Detroit for uh, um, a project with a gentleman named, I don't know if you know him, Drake Pfeiffer? I've heard of his name, yeah. Well, he's, uh, I'm, I'm doing a, a show with him um, where uh, they are actually getting... I'm doing a panel, but they're actually giving me a Lifetime Achievement Award that day as well. Oh, well deserved, right? It's just, um, I, I'm looking forward to that, but AMP again, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to the world hearing more of AMP. Right. Another great keyboardist, I'll uh, touch briefly on this, going back on one of your records, you work with Renato Nato, right? Oh, yeah, Renato, who works with Prince a lot. Yeah, yeah, great Brazilian keyboardist. Oh, he is. Definitely is. In fact, a couple of the tracks that uh, I have in the program, um, he worked on with me because now I am using and uh, um, let's say I'm combining the two together because I feel that they all they both have a lot to offer, be, being blended and being let's say um, put together properly, and that is uh, programming along with a lot of musicians. You know, and um, Renato did 
some programming for me, I think, about two years ago. He actually worked closely with me on another project. On the last project that I did, which is called Kiss in the, uh, 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 Kiss in the Sand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we play that. Which was, uh, it was uh, more Brazilian influence than, it, uh, um, than any of my other projects, for all the... I have a sincere love for Brazilian music anyway. And I have a, a, a very long history with, with Brazilian musicians, starting with Marcos L.A. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing some work down there at some point in, 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 in the in near future as possible. Yeah, the Moon Ride Tour over to Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, sounds great. Yes. So, uh, but first and foremost, go out and see Leon Ware October 27th on Monday. Uh, he'll be at the Blue Note Legendary uh, Club there on West 3rd Street. And uh, he'll be there with his band, the Moonride Band, in support of the great new record on Stax Records. You can go to leonware.com, stax-records.com, also concordmusicgroup.com. It's available for all sorts of digital downloads as well. And... I really got to thank you so much for coming by, Leon. It's totally my pleasure. I look forward to, as I said, meeting you and your wife as soon as possible and uh, having you uh, enjoy um, one of my, um, as, as I call them, soul-reaching, soul-searching, and heart-to-heart. -heart, uh, I don't even call them shows. I call them flows. <laughs> and also special thanks to your wife, Carol, who who's a great uh, music industry person as well. So thanks to Carol. Yeah, she's sitting right here, and she thanks you as well for, for the time spent. And uh, uh, again, thank you. And I look forward to be, being available to you and your audience uh, as soon as possible. All right, we're going to go with two from Moon Ride. We'll play the title track, Moon Ride, and seg right into that Amp Fiddler-Leon Ware collaboration from inside. 